This video is going to go through how to create your MYP portfolio. The first thing you'll need to do is log into your TKS Google account. And once you're in there, go to the Sites tab that's located up here uh, on your top black bar there. You're going to probably have a portfolio from last year, but we're not going to be using that one. You'll be able to link to that one from, from what you have this year, but this year there's a different format. So you'll create a new one, and you guys are MIP students, so you need to use that MIP portfolio template. And please ensure you name it properly. So you do first name, space, last name, remembering your capital letters, and then MYP to differentiate this portfolio from the one that you may have done in PYP and the one that you may be doing in the DP program. Once you've done that, just click Create. And now you see the basic setup for your portfolio. And there's really not a ton of changes that you need to make here. Everybody takes a language A and a language B. One might be Arabic, one might be uh, English, or the other way around. You may also have French in there. So all of this stuff really relates to all the classes that you'll be taking within MIP, with the also having a co-curricular spot for where you can discuss things such as your, uh, maybe you're on the basketball team or track or whatever else. Uh, there's an area for community and service where you'll be reflecting upon the stuff that you're doing for community and service. And then also for those of you that are in grade 9 and 10 when you start working on your personal project, there is an area for that. So how this site works. It's actually quite simple. It's basically there's pages here and they're all posting pages which means they're like little mini blogs for each one of your uh, classes here. So how would you make a post? you would click on the name of the class and click on the button new post. You will recognize this sort of layout that comes up. It's the editing layout. You can see sort of the dotted lines around everything so you can write your title up here and start writing text in here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Alright, so I'm done typing my little blurb, my reflection on using the iPod to track fitness. And you can do anything within your post that you could do on uh, your previous portfolio. You can insert images and Google documents and uh, drawings from Google and presentations and all this type of stuff. I'm going to insert an image. I was talking about the iPod. I found a beautiful image of the iPod with the thing that I wanted to show, the Nike Plus thing, whatever that's called. And I insert it. I might want it a little bit smaller. I might want to align it in the center. I think that looks very good. I'm going to click Save. And now what happens, this is actually a published web page on my portfolio. The great thing is, is that when uh, your teacher goes to your site or your parents go to your site to take a look, this is what it will look like. It has that post, a little blurb about it, and a little icon from your image that you have in there with your post. And so each one of these rectangular shapes is actually a gadget that will pull all of your different posts from your pages and put them on the front. Each one will show three to five different posts that you have. And when you have more than that, your parents or your teachers can click on the View More button down here. And they'll have an option to see other pages. Right down here, if you have ten pages, they'll have the option just to flick through the other pages. And so this uh, phys ed page will have the most recent five or ten uh, posts that you have, and then you can go back onto, you know, page two, page three. Another great thing is that if you're within uh, your site here and you know that you talked about an iPod at some point, you can search your site and it will find any of your posts that mention iPod. So that's putting in a basic post. Uh, you could insert the images. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of inserting a document here. Let's say in language A we had an essay or a paper on, I don't know, Macbeth or Hamlet or something like that. So you have your new post and your teacher just said, you know what, just embed your paper in there so that your parents can see it. So here we go. I'm going to embed my Hamlet paper. Embedding my Essays, quite easy. I'm going to click Insert, Document, 
and I wrote my essay within Google Docs. Uh, that's very important. Anything that you do within Google Docs is easily inserted and attached to your website. I strongly suggest that as much work as you possibly can do, you do within Google Sites. I'm going to click Select. This, this stuff I'm just all going to leave the same. Click Save. And what you see is this gray placeholder. This gray placeholder, uh, I've just centered it, this gray placeholder, when I save this document and publish, will pull your essay from your Google Docs and put it on this page. So let's see how that looks. So uploads your essay that can now be scrolled through and read by your teacher, by your parents, by whoever wants to read it. Uh, if somebody wants access to it or a copy of it, they can click on this link here and they'll be able to get a copy of it to look at it. Uh, that would be for teacher purposes probably. And how does that look on here? It actually will just have the title Hamlet Essay posted a minute ago by your name. All of these pages here connect to the gadgets that are located on your home page. And to refresh your memory, it was that each one of these gadgets will show the last three to five posts that you've created. And in order to see more of your posts, you can click on the View More button and it will show the different posts that are there. You be able to scroll down through them and scroll through the different pages. This is the basic use of your portfolio. You don't really have to make any other changes. Once you've done all that, you've got a portfolio there that is going to work.